That's great. Good morning. There he good is. Morning. Very good. Thank you very much for doing this. Um, I think it's quite interesting to hear how, how it's been going with Edinburgh Investment Trust. Obviously, things have turned around in the UK market, and um, I think there'll be quite a lot of questions about what you've been up to. But I think, as usual, we'll, we'll just start off with you talking us through what the fund's trying to do and how it's going about it, please. Yeah, thanks, James. So I'm going to move at, at, at pace on this one because um, I've been briefed on 10 minutes. So we've got a few slides to, to rattle through. Um, really, what I'm looking to do is put together a 40 to 50 stock portfolio with 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 the team I, I, I work on. Um, the joy of this is we can not only um, pick stocks from the UK equity market, but also non-UK stocks. And we can talk about that in, in questions. Um, the style which we adopt is what we call a total return approach, which is basically thinking about about both capital and income, because I think, you know, if you skew it too much to income, you might actually get companies for whom the income, if you like, is a is more of a tithe. What we want is companies for whom the income naturally flows off off the cash flow statement. We do this by, in the main, you know, really nitty gritty sort of fundamental uh, competitive analysis. And, you know, ESG has obviously come up on the agenda dramatically in the last two, three years. But frankly, it's always, always been part of our process. You know, we think about it as sort of responsible capitalism. Cap, you know, companies need to craft their profits uh, with respect to society. Uh, we're lucky enough, obviously, to be doing this in within the Lion Trust uh, umbrella, which provides really good risk oversight. And obviously, our aim is to out perform. And without further ado, next slide, please, James. So this is the performance, you know, crucial in any trust. You can see there we started in the teeth of COVID when we were decamping, um, not knowing really what the what, what COVID was at that time. Um, our then prime minister was in hospital. You know, this was really odd times. But you can see there over the totality, which is some two and a half years, uh, if you look at the right hand side there, we've produced some, some good performance. What you can see there is the net asset value is some 10% uh, plus ahead of the all share index over that period. It's obviously a positive number. And then the share price as the discount has moved in from a very uncomfortable double digit level to a single digit level where it is at the moment, it's approximately 7%. So still work to do. You can see there the share price is up some 54 uh, 54 percent. And I've I borrowed a little slide, a little um, phrase from our chairman, who who our outgoing chairman, Mr. Mr. Suarez, who termed it a, a very encouraging start. But I'll leave you you to judge on that. Um, so yeah, good start in what is you know the critical aspect of any trust, which is the performance. Next slide. So next slide is is really just showing the team. All I really want you to do is take away from that is that it's uh, it's we've got substantial bandwidth, frankly. So next slide. Yeah, so next slide is, is the investment uh, approach. And I'll just spend a, a moment on this. So, you know, we start with uh, the macro. We spend about a quarter of our time uh, thinking about the macro. And I've got a slide in a second on that. But in essence, what we're trying to do is think about uh, the building uh, headwinds, obviously try and avoid that and think about the tailwinds which might be building. And really what we're trying to think about is kind of the flavor of what might be in the FT, the Wall Street Journal on a six to nine month view, because that's really what is gonna determine what 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 will be um, uh, driving performance as, 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 as we go forward. But the vast bulk of the, of the time which team you saw on the previous slide spends their time on is really um, getting into the guts of the companies themselves. And, you know, what I really say to you is that we spend the vast bulk of our time um, before we, we, we plunge into the sort of footnotes of report and accounts and, you know, build Excel spreadsheets to think about the earnings power. You know, a big part of our time is really thinking about the competitive 
strengths that a company might have because after all what we're really after is companies for whom you know if you're competing against them uh, they're really difficult to compete against you know we want companies for whom if you're competing against them they almost sort of think ah, these aspects are just just not fair they're very very difficult to replicate so you know if you think about a company such as rs components which is you know reported relatively recently you know the gap and you can see if you click on their investor website the gap in their in their sales growth relative to competition has widened over covid uh, and that's a combination of things competitive fatigue uh, in their competitive um set it's also the reality reality is if you think about what they do you know they are um distributing on a just-in-time basis a huge array of product you know the SKUs they have in 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 in, in their warehouses can be up to 700,000 they also stock up to 2 million on a, on an extended basis they're obviously liaising with 2,500 suppliers over 80 countries I mean these are staggering statistics and obviously data is a big thing and so you know the gap between them and the competition is endlessly widening and very very difficult to compete against so, you know, the returns that business throws off are such that, you know, it really warrants a very strong position in the portfolio. And you think about the macro trends there, it is essentially reshoring. If you think about what every company is looking to do at the moment, it is brainstorm their supply chain to think about the single points of failure. And Electros is a big beneficiary of that. So next slide, please. Yeah, so this is just a, a word on the macro. And um, I was amused to read in the, in, in, in the papers, well, not amused, but it was a very good summary, I think, to see that Collins, the Collins Dictionary, had um, chosen the word permacrisis as their word of the year. And I think that sort of sums up the fact that, you know, actually investors are in pretty bad psychological shape actually as we as as we sit here or if you look and if you want to google some of the economist titles which we've had and i use it as in the economist magazine titles um if you think about some of them and i'll just quote them you know there was one about a month ago how not to run a country with our picture of the then prime minister in a canoe um there was welcome to Brittany. Um, but more recently, there's reasons to be cheerful with a picture of our new prime minister, Mr. Sunak. Um, now, obviously, in terms of the actual reality, the pound is at a low ebb. I borrowed a, 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 a headline from the uh, from the FT. You know, the dollar is strong against all currencies, but particularly against the pound. And I think that shows a pressure valve of what international investors uh, think about the, the UK. Some pur purchasing power parity is a, is a lot higher. Then if you think about other elements of the setup, um, because pound being at a low ebb, I think arguably is, is, is good news. Then if you think about um, the flow data, you know, many of the listeners will be aware that actually uh, retail flows in the UK have been one way really since the Brexit vote. But also, if you look at a long term perspective, pension schemes have been um, either moving towards global equities for the last 15 to 20 years or moving into alternatives. And I've shown there um, some data from Callistone. So, you know, the setup, as in the supply, is very good in that it's very, very skinny in terms of positioning for, for the UK. Then if you think about what we're entering, and obviously today um, we saw some stats out on the UK economy which showed that um, uh, growth was negative in the most recent quarter and I think people immediately in their muscle memory think about the last recession the last recession was obviously a bad one some six percent you can see there uh, peak to trough it's 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 my and our team opinion that this recession will arguably be uh, less bad why I say that is the imbalances will be less 
um, you can see that unemployment is at a relatively low ebb. It's just very, very different to 2008. The banks are in good shape. There are a number of data points that all point to actually uh, a much more muted uh, recession, as indeed uh, Lord Wolfson, who's a very shrewd commentator, talked about uh, yesterday. So, you know, I'd say the setup for the UK equity market is relatively uh, positive. Next slide, please. Um, I'm going to I'm going to jump quite quickly over this one, but leave it perhaps for um, for question, just because I'm conscious um, of of time. Uh, but what we've set here is 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 you know some logos of purchases we've made, and the key point I'd like to to make is that we've been selling some of the more defensive, reliable growers and buying into some of the more edgier situations, which I think are more appropriate for the market market on a nine month view, but obviously happy to answer any questions on those um, if listeners wish. Next slide, please. Again, um, time is relatively short, but the key point I'd really love um, listeners to take from this is that the way we and the team set up this, this portfolio for the trust is to have multiple themes um, in terms of how we're laying, layering the portfolio. One of the massive themes I would say though is Darwinism, this idea that against multiple black swans, which we've seen uh, over the last three, four years, um, and uh, which has developed for many companies a degree of sort of corporate fatigue. Actually, what we're looking to really champion is the companies for whom, you know, they are really crunching the competition. So if you think about what Premier Inn uh, within Whitbread is doing relative to the competition, you know, it really is widening the gap against not only the independent chain, but also the franchise operators who are much more geared than Whitbread. Um, and Whitbread is obviously vertically integrated. It's not paying fees to things like uh, booking.com, et cetera, et cetera. You know, and therefore, again, if you look at its investor website, it's no surprise that actually the gap between them, them and the competition is dramatically uh, changing. But again, um, with, the, with the need to sort of keep roughly to time, I'm going to leave that for questions if there's any um, questions that sort of come along from that. So next slide, please, James. This again is a slightly dry slide, um, but what it's looking to do is just give you some, you know, actual data of the sort of key positions relative. So on the right hand side, it gives you a feel of when we're when we're, you know, really, really punchy about a, a holding. We look to have, you know, three percent plus active bet on a on a particular holding. So the NetWest, the Tesco's, the BAE systems of the RS, which I've talked about, you know, these are the types of holdings which 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 we'd be holding. And what I'd also emphasize is that we do have um, non-UK listed stocks um, on the international thing, bottom left, you can see there some 11%. And what I'd also emphasize is that we've gradually been building up the sort of mid cap as there've been big opportunities, I think, in the last three to four months. So buying the likes of Howden, uh, Travis Perkins, uh, to name but a couple, or the likes of m and where we see, you know, really quite interesting valuation opportunities. Next slide, please. And this is this is this is my final final slide. I mean, really, um, you know, Edinburgh Investment Trust, I think, is a really interesting way to play what I believe we're going to see in the UK equity market. We're going to see something of a UK equity uh, renaissance because the valuations are, are are very low, and I think many of the um, elements for which the UK equity market has been marked down, uh, if you like, the perceived Achilles heel, um, are actually going to come into their own. So if you think about, uh, you know, the banks, they're now in a very strong uh, position. They're now making money from both sides of the balance sheet. Um, liquidity is good. Risk management is good. It appears that you know the recession which we may uh, go into would be relatively uh, shallow and dealable, and therefore the dividend flow from these is going to be very strong. 
If you think about the international energy companies, it's now very clear, it's very important where we get our energy from. So the likes of Shell, the number one player in LNG is a very, very valuable business. If you think about transitioning, we need copper. So the likes of Anglo-American, which is massively growing its copper assets, is again a peach of a, a peach of an asset. So you know, if you if you are a believer in UK equities, as as I am, this I think is a very interesting way to play that renaissance because you get access to a team with a long-term record where the discount to net asset values is some 7%, you get a good running yield, um, and also you get uh, it in a, in a prudently geared uh, manner because we, the, we, in conjunction with the board, took the opportunity to recast um, and refinance uh, the debt which we have in this trust um, at a really a very low coupon in September 2021. And that gives it strategically long dated low cost uh, debt. So, you know, with that, James, I might just pause and then we can plunge into questions as listeners um, wish.